Good morning and welcome back. And we just got this tractor on the chopper. Couple good days of mowing in and we need the tractor. So we're gonna drop the chopper real fast. We are going to pull a couple loads of corn out of that small bin over there. And we'll be back to hauling beans tomorrow. So we didn't want to pull the 3020 off the other auger. It was gonna be quicker to drop this 6130 and throw it on that on this small auger we have than to go grab the 3020. Can you go any higher? So the chopper is on a thousand PTO shaft, our auger's on 540. So we gotta spin this around real quick. They make it pretty easy on these newer ones. Should be anyway. So this 21 spline is the thousand. This smaller one, or the less spline, is the 540. Spin it around and it changes the speed somehow. Magic. Gonna be needing this. We're going old school with this auger today. Those stupid wasps build nests in the worst place. Looks like it normally does. doesn't work like it normally does though. Turn the breaker on might help. See if we can get anything fun come out of this thing. Some would call that slow and steady. We call that worn out. Come over here real quick, get out of the wind. So that truck will be loaded in hour 20 maybe. Extremely slow. The only reason we're still using that bin, it's a good bin, small, terribly worn out. But the, So the only reason we're still using it is it's actually the landlord the owner of this farm that we farm for stores his crop, his portion of the crop in that bin. 
and thankfully we are putting a new unload auger in it this summer so that unload time that worn out auger should all be fixed come this fall so next year unloading that should be significantly better thank goodness all right so while we've got the chopper here unhooked we have dad's old John Deere 4020 that runs off LP just put a new battery in it tractor has it. how long has it been since the tractors ran except for a few days ago about a year maybe a little more um, but the problem we're having with this tractor is the PTO is stuck on anytime the tractors running so is the PTO so we're gonna fire this up real quick we're gonna swap it over to the thousand PTO shaft hook it onto the chopper because we were told that it's most likely just stuck clutch plates I think don't quote me on that I really don't know all I know is it's stuck and we were told to put it under a pretty good load and maybe that'll free the PTO up Well, problem number one, get the PTO shaft out. Got the ring out. That should just slide out. Mm-hmm. What if you wrap the wire just around the shaft and then around and around? Oh, moved a little. Oh yeah, you gotta be quick because the oil runs out. You gotta flip it over. I forgot that's what's different on this. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you make it quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it comes out. All right. So we here. spoke wrong. This one, on, on the older tractor like this, this one does not spin around. This it's actually there. right there. So That's we, a store, yeah. so we got a, I don't know another C-clamp. Yeah, so it's actually stored up here. So we got another C-clamp. Got to pull a second shaft out and swap these out. This one will go up here. This one will go in here to run the chopper. I didn't just got to pull out. That's All right. Well, now that one is supposed to pull out just like that one was supposed to pull out. But it's going to be a lot harder to get leverage on that thing. So too many years. Problem number two. How many years has it been since that's been out? don't even know years Let's see if Dustin has the magic touch oh look at that I'll take that problem number three I'll show you guys here in a minute is as you can tell tractors running but if you can see it so is the PTO the trick now is to get that started because when he starts that he's gonna try and spin the PTO all right Well, 
Well, unfortunately, the simple load of the chopper didn't break it free. So, he's going to go mow with it and see if see if he can't put enough load on it to do it. So, sit back and enjoy an old 4020 LP mowing some pasture. can't beat the sound of an old tractor loaded down. Well, unfortunately, that hasn't worked. So, at least we know it's not just stuck and there are other issues with it probably gonna have to go back to the shop to diagnose further on that one but at least she's getting some run time like we said it's been a little over a year since it's even ran let alone ran that hard unfortunately that 4020 project is gonna have to wait for another day we have more pressing projects at the moment one of which is getting the dual front duels off the 8335 and getting it hooked up to the side dress applicator get it ready to start running over some corn go ahead and get this other dual off so dad took this one off uh, it's been a day or two ago because we finally got our cv joint replaced which he needed the dual off for that anyway so it kind of worked out but let's get this other dual off Put these back in with a few extra washers so they're not too long. And that's all it takes to remove a duel. Tractors look so funny now when there's no duels on the front. So we already went over all the maintenance stuff this winter on this. Last thing we got to do now that it's hooked up for good is put a few hundred gallons of water in it. We'll run, run water through the pump, all the hoses, make sure all the knives are spraying correctly. And then we'll do a quick catch test to make sure it's calibrated correctly. And then it'll be ready to start side dressing. How much water you want to put in it? Okay, just enough to everything. We'll probably want to do a quick catch test and everything. Just to make sure. Just to make sure. Yep. 150 on the dot. What do you say, Dustin? Yeah. A little extra. Yeah, we got a little extra. It won't hurt nothing. That splatter's normal. 
once they're in the ground it all goes all goes clean Looks like we've got good flow to each one. All of our trusty flow indicators that all float at a different level. shooting out any different than the others it's just hitting that guard to keep it from digging in the dirt there you go oh and then to get him unstuck hook that we're going to check three normal rows and that outside is a half rate so he's going to tell the monitor to do 32 ounces and we'll see what we come up with when we measure how much it actually dispensed okay, so i misspoke a little bit his calibration is trying to run 44 ounces so with the difference between the water and the fertilizer and the weight of the two uh, we're calibrating with water, but we're going to be running fertilizer, obviously. So that that factor throws it off a little bit. 44 ounces of fertilizer from the monitor should equate to roughly 52 to 55 ounces of water in the catch jug to be calibrated. So let's see what we got. So it looks like it's just a tick over the 52 ounce mark. So I think we're pretty close. Close enough, we're gonna run our first tanker of known volume. Check this other one. Yep. Just about, just about at that 52, if not a little better mark. So I think it's pretty set. I think it's ready to start running some corn. What do you say? Nothing. Say, so let's run corn. All right, that's it from us today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you find that thumbs up button. Give us a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see you in the next one.